the explainer and we're talking about the placement at the universities and I want us to just reflect on what just happened yesterday. Uh, the numbers that were released by the Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement uh, uh, Service in as far as um, uh, the class of 2022 is concerned. So the students under consideration are 870,000. Uh, those that qualified for university are 173,244. Uh, those that qualified for diploma and below are 697,000. These are people that scored between grade C all the way down to E. And of course, something else to note is that um, uh, the capacity for degree courses is 252,000. Those that qualified, again, 173,000. Those that were placed for those opportunities are 140,000. For TIVET, there are 515,000 capacities. Those that qualified, 697. Those that were placed, uh, 145,000. And obviously, the total comes to 285,000, according to uh, COOPS. Something else to note is that uh, the capacities at public universities for degree are 200,000. 621, those that, that were placed in those institutions are just over 130,000. For private universities, there were 52,000. Those that were placed are 9,662. So the capacity is 52,000. Those placed is 9,000, just below 25%. Uh, the TVET courses in universities, the capacities are 20,168. Those that were placed are 13,465. And uh, the TVET, under the Ministry of Education, there are 478,000 capacities. Those that have been placed are 125,000. And of course, there are other TVETs that are uh, non uh, Ministry of Education. 14,950 is the capacity, and um, 5,500 uh, is the those that were placed for diploma secondary teachers, um, well, it just moved. But obviously, the applications are 285,000. Those that have been placed are just uh, below uh, that number of applications. The institutions where students have been placed are 282. But something important is that out of those uh, that have been placed, 9,673 scored a C plus and above, but applied for TVET courses. And this is what we've been talking about. And uh, Dr. Wahome, you were explaining um, why some of the students have been pushed to that level. Uh, let me come to you, Charles Ringera from HELB. In case such a student now who has been assigned to go to a technical institution, a TVET institution that is Kambu Institute of Science and Technology, and now they may prefer to transfer, how much time do they have? Because again, you're opening the window for application for scholarships and uh, bursaries and loans. How much window do they have to work around what they want to do? So uh, thank you, Sam. So the applications uh, of uh, scholarship and loans and bursaries uh, opened last night at midnight. Mm -hmm. But you know, there, there are a number of things they need to assemble. First of all, ID copies of their parents, their, ID, uh, their IDs also, the admission letter from the institution that is actually you know, taking them in. And that, before uh, it's after they get those documents, they then get into the system and then start the application process. Now, we close that application process on 27th of, of, um, of, of this month. Um, thereafter, what we have learned from COOPS, the, the transfer window is opening next week, Marcia. Yeah. It opens next week. Remember, as the data of COOPS is changing, it is changing straight away on the platform for funding. Okay. So even if they change or they are changed, then straight away it will change on the platform of funding, which means by the time the student is applying in another institution, for example, this student at KIST, and now she's maybe being transferred to Technical University of Kenya, then we can already seamlessly see that information coming through. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Dr. P.S. Uh, Tivet, we are seeing a lot of capacity being declared, but the applications are minimal. What is going on? Is it that people don't know they actually qualify for these courses? Is it a question of um, resources available for uh, the candidates and their families? What's going on? Thank you, Sam, for having me this evening. Yes, the, 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 the uh, vacancies are there for the students to come. But what we have seen here, Sam, is about the placement by COOPS. And those placements, uh, the, the COOPS has placed them, but we still have a lot more capacity. So some what we have, much more than what COOPS has placed, is the walk-ins. And when they come, we still admit them, and that capacity eventually actually gets taken up mm -hmm. by the walk-ins. What we saw is just what COOPS has placed, all right, but the walk-ins are much more 
than what COOPS has placed. And what is the window period of applications, especially for the class of 2022? Uh, for the class of 2022, some they, they, uh, they have, they are, they are those who are coming in in September. They're coming in in September. So from now all the way to the end of August, they have the space to apply. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dr. are you concerned, especially when you look at the data that uh, over 9,000 students that qualify to go to the university uh, applying for TVET courses being placed? Uh, well, Dr. says here that there's no useless course, and indeed there's none. <coughs> but are you concerned that someone who would have qualified for a higher level of education is choosing um, something else? Y yes, I am concerned. <laughs> uh, why? Because <coughs> we have a problem as a country. We seem to swing in waves. There was a time to close middle-level colleges and turn them into universities. Now we are swinging everyone into Tibet. Tibets have invested, but they don't have capacity to take the numbers of those who qualify to go to Tibet. You have just looked at the table that you are showing here. Those who are qualified were 600 and something thousand. The capacities were 500. Why are we pushing those who are qualified to go to university back to Tibet when Tibets don't have capacity to take all those who now qualify strictly to be in Tibet? We need to remember this, that this Tibetization wave began about five years ago. At that time, we had neglected Tibets for more than 20 years, which means we had not even trained tutors for those Tibets for all that period. Where have we suddenly gotten all the tutors to train the hundreds of thousands from? I, I can tell you, and if you go around the country, there are lots of young people getting into Tibet for three-year courses and taking four, five years there because they are failing exam. And, and this is not a lie. If you, you, I know if you looked at your data, it will tell you that. So before long, again, this wave of Tibetization will stagnate. And I wish that we could have a structured way of promoting Tibets so that they take the huge numbers that don't qualify to go to university, but we allow those who are qualifying to go to university to go to university. Mm -hmm. I had to speak to a teacher, high school principal. She's a friend of mine. She was telling me that they, she's asking the son not to go to university because uh, now there are no jobs for university graduates. And I asked her a simple question. Your son has qualified to be among the top 20 because in last year's exam, just 19% qualified to go to university. Right. Has qualified to compete with 19% of, of his cohort. You want to ask him, come down and compete with 81% uh, uh, of, your, of, of your cohort. Right. Come on. Okay. Dr. Tari, I see you're not very happy, <laughs> but how do you also explain that 9,000 you're saying they chose Tibet courses. Is it that they chose those as their first choice or it is the challenge like that student we featured that they ended up there? Um, let me clarify that uh, the 9,000, most of them, apart from the outliers that I've uh, mentioned, um, the pattern is this way. You find a student who would like to do mechanical engineering or pharmacy, or uh, architecture, quantity survey, and they have a C plus. Definitely with a C plus, they cannot get these uh, competitive courses. So they choose to take the same program, but at diploma level. And then they are assured that once they do the diploma, they will even get some credits when they get to the university. So they will not do three years in diploma and then three, uh, uh, four years in the university. There is now some recognition of prior learning. So um, I can say with certainty right. that a good number of our students who have taken uh, diploma programs uh, because it's because they could not uh, make it for the same program at degree, uh, probably because of the mathematics and the science uh, requirements, and therefore opt to start at a lower level. Mm -hmm. What was interesting this time, um, because of the cost uh, aspect, you know, when making their choices, we saw a lot of parents come forward to participate in their cost selection. 
and we had those discussions with the parents where now we were looking more, it's not just about uh, going to the university, it's what do you really want to do and how much is it going to cost right. uh, the household. So we saw engagement of parents and therefore uh, students who are taking these TVET uh, courses, I can say most of them, 99% made their decisions when they are well informed. Okay, I find that interesting because if you're actually having the time to have a conversation with parents and the students, because they're the primary stakeholders anyway, why then, how do you explain a student is actually applying for courses they do not qualify for, doesn't the system sort of lock you out of what you're applying if you don't qualify? Definitely, the system will tell you, it blinks red and it tells you you do not qualify for this program. So how did that pass? No, it didn't, because if you have... Uh, you want to do architecture and you don't have your um, A minus in mathematics, then it tells you you do not qualify. It gives you, when you click a diploma level, you will still see a diploma in architecture that will require a C in mathematics, which okay. is what you get. So you find there are those making those decisions that are, let me start at, uh, with a mean grade of a C plus, definitely you can, you get into a diploma in architecture or engineering. Okay. Um, let me just also say that uh, when you look at the applications, you know, the data that uh, uh, was out there, when it's not explained, it looks uh, quite alarming. Uh, but when you look at the students who had C plus and above, we have actually placed 80.8%. Um, meaning the, the message was uh, to degrees, and then 5.6% um, to Diplomacy. diploma. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, we are talking about 13.3% uh, of the students who got C plus and above actually being absorbed in our training institutions. Where we have uh, the, the numbers looking a bit discouraging is uh, the lower levels, the, the ones who had a D plus, mm -hmm. Uh, all the way to E. That uh, forms 55% of the population that sat for the exam. Right. Uh, and as our peers has explained, we have those who walk in, uh, we call them walk-ins because they move, they go to the nearest Tibet institutions, they apply, the institutions send us the data for validation. So that is another group that will go in uh, by September. Okay. Then we open the system again for students going on in in January. So again, January we have another intake for TVET, and then we have another, a third intake in May. Mm -hmm. So by the time we are done with these three, uh, then we will have covered quite a okay. good oh, population. Okay. I want to give you a right of reply because uh, there's a question here on the capacity, especially on is it the teaching or the, is it tutoring? A capacity at the TVETs that you're sending so many to the institutions, but you don't, you don't have the manpower to really t take care of them through what they need to learn. What is the capacity at the moment of tutors? Thank you, Sam. We have a big capacity of trainers, about 6,500. And this, we are, we are just about completing, uh, bringing in uh, another 1,300. And in January, we are looking forward to bringing in another 2,000. So we are building the capacity of trainers as we, we get the admissions going up of the students. Mm -hmm. The capacity of the trainers is also being upgraded. We have a Kenya School of Tibet, some, and I had a conversation with Dr. Tarno, who is the chief principal of that uh, institution yesterday. And we have actually a, a, a plan of rolling out the retouring of the trainers. Actually, this is a continuous process because you, you are, like I've told you, we have a whole Kenya school of Tibet, the former KTTC. 
where the, 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 our trainers go through continuous uh, up, upgrading, continuous retooling. And this time, we, are, we, are, we have decided because we wanted to fast track, because of the number of tra trainees that are coming into our institutions, we are actually now not only going to continue doing it at the school, but we are also going into the national polytechnics, where we will have a cohort of our trainers from the Kenya School of Tibet going to each of our national polytechnics, the 11 of them, to go undertake, and, and, and undertake retooling of our trainers in those institutions. So what we agreed yesterday is that between now and the end of the year, we will have retooled approximately 3,000 trainers to upscale them to the level where they are completely able to roll out the CBET curricula. Okay, but when you said that you have 6,500 trainers at the moment, I'm looking at the capacities which are, which are just over 500,000 uh, uh, capacities. So that would appear like it's an average of 100 students per trainer, basic analysis. Is that enough? How are you determining the, the capacities? No, Sam, that is not enough. And we agree that the level, the ratio of the trainer to the trainees is not, is not according to what is actually recommended. That I agree. And that is why I've what also is recommended? said, Sam, 1 to 30, 25, 30, okay. because we are also talking about the skilling. We are talking about uh, uh, actually training the, 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 our, our students to be able to do what we, uh, we expect them to do. Okay. So the, the, the recommended uh, capacity by UNESCO is 1 to 25, 30. Okay. That we do not have at the moment. And that is why some are saying the government is working very hard to bring in more trainers. I have talked about the 1,300 that we are about completing, bringing in, and uh, January we are advertising another 2,000 okay. and on and on. Okay, all right, yes. very interesting. About the capacities at the institutions, the capacity of the teaching or is, is it training uh, staff, we'll have more on this, including the financing of these programs, whether it's at the Tibet institutions or universities, but also the new report from the Presidential Working Party on 